Tata, it's yours. Hello, everybody. Um, it's my pleasure to invite uh, Professor Madhu Venkatesan uh, from Yale, who is going to tell us about his journey. Madhu, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Tapa, and thank you, Sri, for uh, inviting me to this. I would ra rather be sitting and listening to the other talks. The, those, those trajectories are incredible, and the diversity of trajectories is incredible. But let me tell you a little about what I do, and uh, then tell you uh, why I'm doing this, maybe, or how I ended up doing this. My, I, I'm interested in a lot of things surrounding animals. Uh, there's some plant in some corner, uh, Noah, but uh, mostly animals. And thinking about how they move, how their body's mechanics works, uh, how they evolve to do these things. We look at humans, non-humans throwing, more recently started getting interested in other animals, try to apply our thinking towards fossils. But it's not all work. Sometimes there is a lot of pleasure in just observing other behaviors, I suppose. And uh, these are examples which in inspire and motivate me. There is some common shared aesthetic to uh, all of these, these phenomena, behaviors that uh, draws me. Um, so let me tell a little about perhaps why I'm doing these class of problems or what, what dra draws me towards them. The my own trajectory, um, my own trajectory has, uh, if I was to place pins on a map, uh, has gone all over the place to some degree. Uh, most of my childhood was spent in the south of India, uh, in a small town called Kalpakam, which is about a hundred kilometers south of a bigger city uh, that used to be called Madras and now it's called Chennai. In the middle of my growing up in school for high school for one year, my, my father, who was a scientist himself, decided to uh, go to Perth in Western Australia for a year long sabbatical. So I moved there and had uh, the only way I can describe that is a wild ride of a year. The curriculum, everything changes. And I, I would say that had a big impression on my life. And I came back to Kalpakam. Uh, then my undergraduate was in IIT Madras in mechanical engineering. Then I moved uh, to the US for graduate school. And like Noah described the whole GRE song and dance later, I'm uh, there as a master's student, then for a PhD at Cornell, spent a brief stint as a postdoc in mathematics, shifted to Harvard for a postdoc, which was a joint postdoc between human evolutionary biology and applied math started my first uh, faculty position back in India, uh, in, in the manner of speaking a social experiment, if you wish. Um, that experiment lasted just three years, uh, and I moved uh, yet again to the US, to Yale, where I still am. So let me uh, say a little about each of these pieces and how I, I view uh, their influences on me. The, Two first people, unsurprisingly, who had a great influence on me are my mother and father, uh, pictured there, Bhuma and Venkadesan. Uh, I would say their, their philosophy or their mode of interaction with me as a child was just unencumbered curiosity. Do whatever you like. Be whatever, whatever you want to do. Try just be fearless in breaking things if you have to break. I was not that destructive. On the other hand, he, he, he uh, in particular, my father, who's, who is no more, uh, inculcated a whole habit of uh, tinkering. So that is a picture of uh, a model railway set he obtained from somewhere. But what's to me actually more interesting is the little box that's behind that, because inside that box was a music system that he built. And, uh, and there's a speaker system that he built and occasionally he would sit with me and we would take it apart and try to put it back together and often end up with things that we called as bonus parts. We don't know where they fit, but they're left behind. But that is, is in a manner of speaking, a process of trying to figure out how things work. And as I said, this was a, a childhood of do whatever you want. Uh, so raiding cupboards in the house was a very common activity for me. And cupboards co contain lots of treasures. Uh, those are three sampling of books that I vividly recall finding in the cupboard to my surprise and being captivated 
in in junior high school really. So one is the first one is Engineer Garin and his death ray. That's a science fiction story out of the, the Soviet Union about Engineer Garin, who does many amazing things. And uh, there are detailed technical drawings in that science fiction. Next to that, one of the shelves contained a large collection of just Scientific American uh, back volumes, bound volumes. I don't fully know why they were there, but that was a fascinating read. So I'm that specific issue that I've pictured there is, is etched in my memory because that teaches the reader about the cloud chamber and introduction to particle physics. It was, in my mind, bordering on fiction, or on the other hand, fiction was bordering on reality. It was very blurred. And of course, the I think a lot of people have uh, used this book called Gedanken Physics or Thinking Physics, which is physical reasoning about the world. And these types of things were very influential. Uh, and when I came back, there was this brief stint away in Perth where, and I came back to, to India. At that point, I was pretty lost. I, it was unclear to me what I want to pursue uh, and ended up meeting two people in, in Kalpakam, KP and Murthy and Valsakumar, who are both mathematicians and are theoretical physicists who got me hooked on the whole Olympiad circuit. So there were me and a small group of kids would spend, go late into night problem solving purely for curiosity. And that was, again, a very influential set of people uh, in my life. And from there, some notion of uh, adulthood appeared and I ended up in graduate school at Cornell, terribly confused. Along the way, I tried interviewing for a cigarette manufacturing company to be a floor manager and even got the job and ended up not going there and ended up at, at graduate school at Cornell. There, I there were three people who absolutely deeply influenced and changed my life. Uh, one is my life partner, Saumya, who, who has had a massive effect on all aspects of my life. And on my intellectual life, my PhD advisor, Francisco Valero Cuevas, was deeply interested in biomedical questions surrounding the hand. And John Guggenheimer, who was a nonlinear dynamics mathematician, were both co-advising me. And again, they, I, I cannot describe uh, how deeply their influence is, primarily by essentially, again, letting, letting me loose. Effectively, do what you want. Here are rough directions. And here's a lot of cupboards of toys and theories and instruments for you to play with. And that, uh, fortunately for me, continued through my postdoc, which was jointly with Daniel Lieberman, and uh, Maha, Rel Mahadevan, uh, the two of them again hired me through various uh, slush funds, as they call it, and let, let me loose. And that was again a fantastic period of learning, education, head scratching, feeling lost, and trying to find my own problems. Uh, and I was in the privileged position of living a life of the mind, so to speak, right? as, a, as a faculty member. And that continued through NCBS in Bangalore, where I spent three years as an assistant professor and then at Yale in mechanical engineering and material science, forever confused if I'm a mechanician, if I'm a biologist, or if I'm an applied mathematician. And there I want to acknowledge the influence of people again, people at many different career stages. Albert Lipschaber, who was a chance meeting and a few meetings has been deeply influential in, in showing me that it doesn't matter that you're a senior scientist, go into the lab and do your thing. And always lending a kind ear and kind gentle feedback in terms of uh, how I'm thinking about problems. Then there are peer, and I particularly want to highlight the role that Shreyas and Mahesh have had throughout my independent career in shaping problems, in thinking about problems, bouncing ideas of each other. One is a fluid mathematician, fluid mechanician theoretician, and the other is an experimental physicist. And the three of us, to the, the, the only description would be to say we've had a ball. Uh, and there are junior people, your own students who can be deeply influential. And I have, uh, I would like to acknowledge in this context, one of my uh, early PhD students, Neelima Sharma, who's again shaped a lot of my thinking and I would argue things that are going on in my lab. So I was asked to give advice and advice is a tall word. So I will only say, lessons I've learned either the hard way or the pleasant way. To me, it feels like science is about people, people, people. Exchange ideas, 
freely just reach out don't hesitate reach out to people and i've i've never lost from trying to reach out to people to exchange ideas read papers send comments ask questions that correspondence which is the informal back and forth which is not going to be seen in journals has been valuable for me and a big lesson i learned is that happy people do happy science and i think happy science is often creative science uh, on the other hand to contrast it i'm going to quote michel foucault who uh, certainly has a it's it is he's not necessarily talking about the sciences but i believe it applies to the sciences he says the work of an intellectual is not to mold the will of others so political in the in this context uh, it is through the analysis that he does in his or her own field to re-examine evidence and assumptions, to shake up habitual ways of working and thinking, to dissipate conventional familiarities, to re-evaluate rules and institutions. And I think that's really what we do uh, in, in, in our profession. And this, whatever unique trajectory each of us takes, helps us really question what seems to be well understood, well studied questions. And there's inevitably something to be dug deeper in well-known things. I'll stop there. Thank you, Madhu. That was beautiful. So I'm just applauding on behalf of everyone. Um, so uh, I had a question to start with. So uh, you talked about, uh, you know, various institutes across countries. So uh, one thing we always feel like, you know, uh, our question takes us to different places. Uh, However, I wanted to know like how much these places changed or influenced or shaped your questions over the years. I, that's that's a great question because absolutely they did uh, in many un unexpected ways, and I think I I feel surprised uh, routinely that something occurs and I realize oh it was because I was in that place with this person purely by chance a conversation that shapes what I'm doing today. Um, I uh, somewhat flippantly, but somewhat in, in humor, uh, declared that I discovered DNA when I was at NCBS. Of course, I've heard a lot about this, but it's through attending talks, talking to other biologists that I really learn about it. I personally, finally, I begin to understand what is the attraction of the topic there. For example, on the other hand, Mahesh Bandi, with whom we worked on problems in foot biomechanics, I uh, happened to be in Okinawa, so I visit him in Okinawa. He takes me to a marine field station where they show me these uh, walking fish. It was both bizarre and uh, really eye-opening experience. And that has become one of the big projects within my group that we are pursuing to study fish. I, I can't, I, so I think your point is well taken and it's really central to my, my trajectory. That's amazing. So there is one more question from the audience, which is, uh, so, so you told us a few examples of finding mentors and people with resources who made them available to you and let you figure out what you wanted to do. So uh, the question is like, what is the secret to running into so many people who are willing to do that? Um, uh, that's a hard one. I'm a lot of it is chance. Uh, the rest of it is a lesson that I did learn in graduate school, which was, uh, there is no notion of a stupid question. Ask what you think about. And in fact, the stupider it is, the more likely you will actually learn a lot more out of it in some sense. Um, and that asking questions has been a very productive way for me to learn and to identify the people that I want to learn more from. Um, I write to them. I've gone so far as to just randomly show up at people's door and knock that I would not highly recommend, but certainly write to people. <laughs> uh, and uh, in I, I, I've never found people to be anything less than generous with their ideas and their time. Okay, that sounds great. So in the interest of time, I'll just hand it over to Sri and let Sri take it over. Thank you, Madhu. Thank, that was beautiful. Uh, thanks again, Madhu. I'm closing the recording.